Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine, and more specifically using the Sugarcube format of Twine. Over the last few videos, I've been talking about images, how to get them, um, a little bit about the legal elements and how to edit it, but you know, very basic stuff. Of course, I'm neither a lawyer nor a graphic designer. And now we're ready to talk about how to use uh, images in our games. So let's start by showing you what I've done this week. So we go to twinery.org, we choose use in your browser, and we go to the bridge. And you'll notice that there used to be an arrow going from start to cross or wade, and that arrow is, is no longer there. Um, that doesn't matter. It does still go there, as you'll see, but uh, just don't be alarmed if you, do, if you do something like this and the arrow disappears. Just be aware that that will happen. So we're not going to actually play it in the browser, um, and I'll explain why in a minute. I, I'll just, I just wanted to show you that code, but... I've actually got it in a folder and I've set up a little structure because now that we're working with pictures we're going to have more than one file and we need to know where everything is in relation to everything else because we're going to be telling the Twine program look here for, for a picture and load it up. Um, and so we need to have a file system that's easy to remember. So what I've done is I've got game and in game we've got We've got the game, of course, and then I've got pics, which is all the pictures. For the moment, there's only four pictures, um, so a single pics folder is enough. Perhaps later it would be more convenient to break that up and have perhaps character pics and um, location pics and enemy pics or something like that. But for the moment, we've only got pics. And then I've got originals, which is a folder for the original versions of the pictures because I actually edited them, I shrunk them so that they display better in the game. And you may ask, well, why would you bother having a whole folder full of originals that you're not going to use in the game? Well, the reason is because when the game's finished, you might not want to do this, you might delete this, but while you're making the game, uh, you may find that you change your mind about what editing you want to do with the pictures. And this actually happened to me. I shrunk the pictures down from, I think it's 768 pixels uh, wide and tall. I shrunk it down to 300, and I found that that didn't display very well. So then I shrunk it down, I had to go back and shrunk it down to 200. And had I deleted the original pictures, that would have taken a bit longer. So that's why we have originals. Um, but let's get into the game and play it, and I'll show you what I have changed, and then I can show you the code. Um, so choose your race, and then it has three pictures of a dwarf, an elf, and a human, um, whereas previously it had text. So that's one change I've made, so let's pick a dwarf, and then we have the same uh, option we had before, cross over the bridge, and when we cross over the bridge there's a picture of a, of a monster. Um, it did say troll uh, last time, it said there's a fierce troll guarding the bridge, I think, but um, I just liked this picture better than any picture of a troll that I could find, so... I decided to use this and just change it to a monster. There's a fierce monster guarding the bridge, but you smite it with your action win. So the game is not different. It's just that there are there are pictures now. Um, and it still works the same way. If we do that, that'll make us a human, and we can wade across the river and win, and so on. So let's look at the code. And... So I'll X out of that, get back into Chrome, because remember that um, Twinery saves the games that you've made in, in, the, in the browser. So I've been working in Chrome, and if I'd loaded up Firefox, um, there wouldn't be anything there. But anyway, so let's look first at that picture for the monster on the bridge, because that's a bit simpler. Um, it's still quite complicated. And I'm going to, hopefully I can zoom in. Sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble zooming in. 
There we go. So I'll zoom in and I'll show you what I've done. This is the command that tells the game look for this picture and display it. And I'll go through it slowly. You might want to pause, you might want to sort of look at this you know, a couple of times if you're, if you're interested in doing it yourself. So we've got square bracket, IMG, which of course means image, another square bracket, dot dot means go up a level, because if you remember the way we've set it up here, it starts from where the, where the program is, and to get to PIX we have to go up a level to this level, and then we have to go into PIX. So So uh, go up a level, slash pix, slash monster.png. So in other words, it's saying go up a level from where you are, then look for a folder called pix, then in that folder there should be a picture called monster.png, and display that, display that picture. Now, that is not an absolute link. In other words, it doesn't it doesn't say if you had the complete location of that picture, it would probably be something like C drive, users, the name of the user, desktop, and then game. But it does it doesn't give it give you all that. That's an absolute link. It tells you the exact location. What I've what I've done is a relative link, meaning from where you are do this from 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 where the file is in this case the bridge go up a level then go to pix then go to monster.png and because it's relative if it started from somewhere else it wouldn't find the picture so if i was to play the game um from here where it's stored in in the chrome browser we can see that it it can't it can't find those pictures, so it's giving us errors. The game still works, but you can still click on this and it'll choose. But um, of course, you can't see what you can't see what the different races are, and um, because it's what it's done is it's it's gone up a level from wherever it, from from Chrome. It's looked for pics. There probably isn't such a folder, or if there is, it then says look for monster.png. Well, there's probably nothing called monster.png. Uh, sorry, in this case, it's looking for Dwarf Elf or Human, but um, it's not finding those, of course, and so it's displaying this broken link. So, and yet the game is fine. It actually works once it's put in its proper place. So the consequence of that is that what you want to do, what Common Sense suggests is you add a bit of code, then you test it by playing, and then if it doesn't work, you alter it and work out what you've done wrong and eventually you'll get it right and then you publish to file i.e. You, you export the file and then you put the file where it needs to be unfortunately when working with, with pictures you can't do that because it's not going to display properly even if it is properly set up for when it's down for when it's in its proper place so unfortunately you have to change the code publish to file and then test the game. So it's a it's sort of a bit of a pain and it's not uh, intuitive, but unfortunately that is the consequence. The other way you could do it, you might say, ah, well, why don't I, instead of having these pictures on the desktop, why don't I save the pictures on Google Drive or something like that? And instead of having relative links, as I've done, you could have an absolute link. You could, um, let's go back into the picture here, instead of this it could be, it would be something like uh, https colon slash slash drive.google.com slash username slash whatever folder you put it in slash monster.png and that way wherever the file was it would still be getting these pictures. Um, and that's a way you can do it. I would prefer to be able to send the whole package round, like to send all the pictures round and to send all of the um, to send the program round with all the pictures at the same time. Um, 
just because a not all of you are going to have web hosting not all of you can upload to um to google i mean you can get google drive but you know it might be too much of a pain in the ass for you to do that and secondly if lots of people are using your game they're all going to be drawing on these they're all going to be downloading these pictures from your site and that might be you know that might be a problem for you and thirdly because if you have a site a few years later you might get get sick of having it you move on to something else you let the site lapse and now the game doesn't work anymore whereas if you're sending around all of these files at once it doesn't matter if I, I I have a Google Drive and perhaps in a few years I won't but if I don't save them there if I save them as part of the package well me getting rid of my Google Drive doesn't mean that the game doesn't work anymore. So, you know, it's it, minor differences, but I, I just chose to, on balance, I, I would prefer to have all of the pictures um, as part of the package rather than have them uploaded on a website and then download them from the website uh, whenever the game is played. But, you know, you may choose, you may choose otherwise. But anyway, let's... Um, look at a slightly more complicated one. So I've shown you how the absolute link works. I've got, got out of twine and I shouldn't have done that. Let's go to the more complicated one, which is the, the images of the dwarf and so on, which are also links, i.e. you click on them and it takes you to another page and it also sets a variable. So if you choose the dwarf, the game will remember that you your character is a dwarf or and so so too for elf and human now obviously this is a little bit more complicated let's um let's zoom out a little bit there we go oh my goodness so here's what i've done again you know you might want to pause you might want to look at this a couple of times so i've got Square bracket, IMG, square bracket, up, go up a level, slash pix, slash dwarf, dot PNG, unsquare bracket. So that's the image. That bits the image. Then I've got square bracket, cross or wade, unsquare bracket. That is the page uh, to which this picture is a link. And then I've got square bracket, dollars R to one, unsquare bracket. And then another on square bracket. Dollars R to one means if the person chooses to click this particular picture, set R to one. Then I've got, and I have to zoom out to do this. Then I've got, this might be a bit hard to see, but I've got and NBSP semicolon. What that means is uh, a non-break space. It means have a have a space, but don't wrap to another line. And then I've got similar code, except that it's elf.png and it sets R to 2. And I've got and in BSP semicolon again. And then I've got the same code again, except that it's human.png and it sets R to 3. And as you may remember from previous videos, R is the variable which keeps track of what race the um, player has chosen so that even though it goes to the same place it still makes a difference whether you chose to be a dwarf an elf or a human and all right so that is uh, the sort of simple introduction to pictures um, there's a lot of fiddly code in this um, so I wouldn't just Listen to this once through and expect to be able to do it. I, I you know, you, 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 you probably would have to look at it a couple of different times to, um, to get it quite right. And unfortunately, coding is one of those things where you put a single dot, not two dots, and so therefore the whole thing doesn't work. Like if you get one thing slightly wrong, or you put, you put uh, curly brackets instead of square brackets, or you put a, an up and down um, line instead of square brackets, and so therefore the whole thing falls apart. But um, yeah, that's just the nature of computer programming, unfortunately. But um, I hope it wasn't too too mind melting. 
and uh, I hope that you will tune in next time.